Hey what's up guys, welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto had dormant souring soul. This is movie, and this is gonna interesting video I love this fanfic you can check it out this fanfic author name in a description, and if you want more of this series you can comment down and like and subscribe also share with your friends. Let's get in the video. The sudden flash of light appears before fading to reveal the bodies of several people lying in a heap on the floor of a pure white room. After the people manage to get up they look around at their surroundings when the blonde-haired one asks, where the hell are we? The woman with long red hair standing next to him shakes her head I don't know Minato-kun, but it looks like Tsunade-sensei, Jiraiya, Rin, Abito, Kakashi, Anko, Tsum-chan, and Hiashi got pulled along with us she says, gesturing to the other people around them. The woman with long blonde hair pulled into two pigtails looks at Kishino okay what the hell is going on here and well the hell are we? She asks. The flash of light appears in front of the group temporarily blinding them before it fades to reveal a devishly handsome man with thick black hair and beautiful brown eyes, I believe I can answer that question soon a day san he says with a smile and setting everyone on guard. The man raises his hands in a non-threatening manner whoa easy there I mean all of you no harm, I just thought you would like to read a story about someone who will play a very significant role in the future of this world and will be very close with some of you he says, before pulling out a thick book labeled Naruto Saurian Soul and handing it to Tsunade. The man clears his throat, now allow me to introduce myself, my name is K-U-R-O-N-O-D-O-N-O-12, and please don't ask why 12 is part of my name, he says when he notices the boy with black hair and goggles, now I will say this just once so listen closely. Some of the events in this story may or may not happen in your world, so don't go and try to change things too much while you are reading this story, or you might end up changing things too much. However there are some things you can do which you will be able to tell what they are while you are reading he says getting nods from everyone. Hironodono smiles seeing this now there will be times when you can actually see what is happening in the story on the giant TV behind you, and sometimes there will be a button that will appear that will play a certain song during a specific scene. Food and drinks will be provided for you so don't worry about that, and there are bedrooms where you can sleep. You don't have to worry about the outside world since I have stopped time while all of you are in here reading the story he says getting nods from them. Hironodono turns to leave when he suddenly remembers something oh I almost forgot to include one other person he says before snapping his fingers and a red light flashes before fading to reveal a woman with long orange hair, red eyes with black slit pupils, a curvaceous figure, and two orange fox ears on her head, along with nine orange fox tails behind her, and is wearing a crimson kimono. The woman blinks a few times as she looks around before spotting Kashina and Mianto, causing her eyes to widen Kashina-chan, Minato-kun. She asks. Minato and Kashina's eyes widen seeing the woman Akane Nichin how are you out of the seal? They ask surprising everyone when they realize that this woman is the QB. Hironodono clears his throat again causing everyone to turn their attention to him, that would be my doing as she plays a role in this story, and I thought it only fair that she is able to read it along with the rest of you, however she is only out of the seal, well all of you are in here, so don't worry about anything. Now I have to go for now so have fun reading the story he says before vanishing into thin air. Everyone just stars for a minute well we might as well see what this story is about, Minato says before Tsunade hands him the book and he clears his throat well here we go, he says before opening the book and begins to read. Chapter 1. Bloodline Awakens. Kanahagakur no Sato, October 10. It was October 10 and in Kanahagakur no Sato or Kanoha for short, the annual celebration of the defeat of the Kyubi no Kitsune or Nine-Tailed Demon Fox five years ago was in full swing. Everyone is shocked as Minato reads this none more so than Kashina and Akane, both of which suddenly feel a massive sense of dread drop into the pits of their stomachs as Mianto continues to read. However one person in particular was not celebrating no quite the opposite in fact his was running for his life, this person was none other than five-year-old Naruto Uzumaki Namikas son of the Yandai Mei Hokage Minato Namikas and his wife Kashina Uzumaki Namikas and the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, not that he knew any of that. Once again everyone is shocked that not only is the boy the son of Minato and Kashina, but that he is also the Jinchuriki of the QB they are also extremely worried that he is running for his life. A button appears and Minato presses it revealing a picture of Naruto. As the group looks at the image they can't help be gush over how cute he is. Kashina has tears running down her cheeks and smiles my beautiful baby boy she says as Minato wraps his arm around her waist and the two look at the picture of their son for a few minutes. After a few minutes Jiraiya clears his throat Minato you should keep reading to see what is happening and why he is running for his life, he says having a bad feeling about why Naruto doesn't know he is Minato and Kashina's son and snapping Minato and Kashina back to their senses before Minato continues reading once again. 
Now you are probably wondering how does he contain the QB when it was killed 5 years ago? Well the Kyubi is what is known as a Biju, which are near infinite amounts of chakra and Yaki given form, which makes it impossible to kill them, so they can only be sealed. However due to the QB being the strongest of the Biju it can only be sealed in a newborn baby, and Naruto was the only baby born on October 10th when the QB attacked, so the Yandai Mei Hokage Minato Namikas was forced to seal the QB into Naruto, which resulted in the death of not only himself, but also Kishina, leaving Naruto an orphan. After Minato read this there was silence as everyone absorbed everything they just heard. Not only had QB Aka Kane somehow escaped from Kishina's seal, but also went on to attack the village which resulted in the death of both Kishina and Minato, leaving Naruto an orphan. The Kane has tears running down her cheeks as she looks at the shocked faces of Minato and Kishina Kishina-chan Minato kun you know me, I would never do something like that she says to the two people who she views as her younger siblings. Kishina looks to Akane with tears in her eyes I know Akane Nichin, it's just hard to take in the fact that both Minato and I are dead at this time, leaving our son an orphan, after only just meeting him, she says as Tsuna Day walks over and hugs Kishina to her chest to comfort her. The Kashi, Abito, and Rin are shocked hearing that their sensei and Kishina were dead and trying to hold in their sadness. Tsum and Hiashi were also barely containing their emotions, hearing that two of their best friends had died shortly after welcoming their child into the world. Anko had tears running down her cheeks as she found out her big sister Kishina had died. Hiraya was gritting his teeth in anger at hearing his apprentice and Kishina had died. He also couldn't help but shake the feeling that there was more to the QB's apparent attack than what they had heard so far. Minato keep reading, I can't help shake the feeling that there is more to the attack than we have discovered so far he says, causing everyone's eyes to widen before Minato continues to read. The Sandai Mei Hokage Hiraz in Suratobi was forced to retake the position of Hokage and tried to keep Naruto safe by keeping his status as the container of the Kyubi a secret, but the civilian council found out and spread the word in response, Hirazin created a law that prevented the adults from telling the younger generation, so Naruto could at least have a chance at making friends. However that didn't stop some of the more violent people from sometimes hunting the boy down to try and kill the demon and avenge the Yandai Mei, which leads us to where we are now. Everyone's eyes widen hearing this as more tears run down Kashina's cheeks, as the image of her baby boy being chased by mobs out to kill him comes to mind. Tsuna Day holds Kashina tighter to her chest, as Minato continues to read. Naruto was running from another mob of people trying to kill him when here and into a dead end this way he went in here, yelled one of the people of the mob chasing Naruto shit they are getting closer, and I'm trapped thought Naruto frantically when he suddenly hears a voice hold on Kit suddenly everything goes black. Everyone is holding their breath as they listen to Minato read about how Naruto is trapped until they hear the voice and turn to look at a cane, whose eyes are wide hearing this. Mindscape. Drip 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 ah what the hell Naruto opens his eyes to see himself in what looks like a sewer grate the villagers must have caught me and threw me in the sewer again well, might as well get up and get out of here, Naruto begins to get up when he hears a voice from behind him come this way, kid it's time for us to meet Naruto turns around to see a large gate with a piece of paper on it that reads. Seal and walks towards it when he notices a huge fox with nine tails behind it, QB. He screams and falls back. The group chuckles a little at Naruto's reaction before they listen to Minato as he continues reading. Yes kid I am the QB no Kitsune, and we are in your mindscape now you are probably wondering why you are here, and how I am here at this Naruto just nods well, kid the story begins back when the first Hokage Hashirama Senju fought Madara Cheha at the Valley of the End. Madara somehow managed to summon me from my den and then used that damned hack's eyes of his the Sharingan to control me to fight for him, however Hashirama's wife Mito Yuzumaki was able to use her mastery of seals to seal me within herself. After the battle was over and both Madara and Hashirama were dead, Mito returned to the village and lived her life, and over time me and her would sometimes talk to each other in her mindscape, however time passed and Mito grew older to the point where she was nearing end and we began to talk about what would happen when she died. We had discovered that when she dies I would be free again, and upon realizing this we decided that if I was free, somebody might control me again someday and cause more destruction, so we decided that I would be transferred into someone else before Mito died. This led to Mito choosing a young girl named Kishina Yuzumaki to become my next container she was your mother kid at this Naruto's eyes widened and small tears formed at the corners of them. Everyone turns to look at a cane hearing this wait so you and my grandmother not only got along, but decided to seal yourself in Kashina when Mito Bachin was nearing her end. Tsuna Day asks not believing what she is hearing. The cane nods yes it was about a year or two after I was sealed within Mito that I finally broke free of Madara team's control and began to converse with Mito. It was a few years after that when the two of us became friends and it was about a decade before her death that we began to discuss what to do when she passed on. 
in the end like it says in the book we decided that for the safety of not only myself, but everyone else I would be transferred to Kashina, who had just recently come to live in Kanoha she says shocking everyone before Minato continues to read. Yes your mother was my container before you kid, over time she would come into her mindscape, and we would talk about various things like her life, the status of the world outside the seal and other things, and we grew close to the point where we saw each other, as sisters Naruto begins to open his mouth to ask a question, but QB cuts him off yes kid I am a girl. One day she told me about how she fell in love with a young man by the name of Minato Namikaze, and how they got married, she even brought him into her mindscape, sometimes to talk to me, at first I didn't like him, but after talking with him grew to like him and see him as a little brother. One day they both came in and told me that Kishina was pregnant at this Naruto suddenly interrupts, but wait if Kishina was my mother, then that would mean that Minato Namikaze is my father, but he was the Yandai Mei Hokage. Once again everyone is shocked that Kishina and Minato talked with and befriended a cane, as they continue to listen to Minato read. Yes kid Minato Namikaze is your father now please don't interrupt again, now after telling me that Kishina was pregnant, we started celebrating when we were done, I told you parents that I would like to give you a gift, of course they asked why I would do this, and I simple said that they were the closest thing I have ever had to a family and any child of theirs, I would also consider family. They asked what the gift was, and I told them of a bloodline that I had created using the remains of creatures that I came across when I was young, needless to say they were shocked and honored and accepted, so I began to implant the bloodline into your DNA, however the night you were born tragedy struck. At this the Kayubi lowers her head for a moment, so Naruto asks what happened after a moment the Kayubi continues her story. Everyone turns to look at a cane whose eyes are wide, so that's why the story is named Naruto Saurian Soul, she says confusing the others. Ashina raises an eyebrow hearing this what do you mean a cane Nichin? She asks curious about what he means. The cane just smiles just keep reading, and you will see she says mysteriously as Minato begins reading again. It's a known fact that when a female Jinchuriki is giving birth a seal containing the Biju sealed within her weakens, so extra precautions are taken due to this though when your mother went into labor it was kept secret, except for the few people who would to be on hand to help deliver you, which included your father and few others. However somehow the secret was let out, and a man came right after you were born and held you hostage before kidnapping your mother and extracting me from her, he then placed me under a Jinjustu just like Madara did, and forced me to attack Kanoha, your father was able to lead me away from Kanoha, to where your mother and you were in hopes of sealing me back into your mother. But due to just giving birth and having me ripped from her she was too weak so he had to seal me into you, your mother used a special ability of hers to create chakra chains to hold me down, while your father prepared everything. But as he was sealing me into you I broke free for a second, and in my state I lashed out toward you and your parents got in the way and were fatally wounded by one of my claws. It was then that I finally broke free from the Jinjustu and noticed what I had down a tear trails down Kaiba's cheek, and Naruto walks up and hugs her as best he can despite her size, it's alright Kaiuchan I don't blame you for your actions, he says with a small smile on his face. Everyone is speechless upon hearing the truth behind a cane attacking the village. Abito then thinks of something wait if the person who is behind a cane sen attacking the village did so by using a jinjutsu like Madara, then that would mean they had the Sharingan he says, surprising the others who turn to look at him. The Kashi just stares at Abito okay who are you and what have you done with the dope he says lazily causing Abito to gain a tick mark on his forehead. Tsuna Day narrows her eyes, so it was in Achiha behind a cane's attack figures that the cause of it would be one of them no offense Abito she snarls, while well, Libido just waves it off none taken Tsuna Day Sama other than Makoto Sama and her son Itachi, I can't stand the Achiha, even though I am one he says. Ureya narrows his eyes as he thinks on everything they have found out so far as Minato continues to read. Thank you kid now after realizing what I had done I began to panic, but your parents said it was alright, and that it wasn't my fault, your father then completed the seal, and I was sealed in you however I was able to hear what was happening outside, due to the seal being just finished, and heard the sand I may Hokage talk to your father, just before he passed his dying wish, was that you've been seen as a hero, for the next five years I waited for the day when we would be able to meet, and I would be able to activate your bloodline if you wanted me to. QP says. Naruto was speechless after hearing all this learning he had parents who not only loved him, but gave their lives to save him, that his father was the Yandai Mei Hokage, that he had the QB sealed in him, and that he had a bloodline waiting to be activated, but realized that he would follow in his parents' footsteps and protect the village just like they had. With determination in his eyes he then spoke QB please activate my bloodline, my parents gave their lives to not only protect me, but also the village, so I will follow in their footsteps, I will use this gift from you to protect those who are precious to me like my parents did before me, and that includes you. Hashina and Minato cried tears of joy at seeing their son wanting to follow in their footsteps and protect that which is precious to him. 
Tsunade smiled proudly as this as she could tell he would protect those that were precious to him like he claimed. After a few minutes Minato continues to read. QB was stunned by Naruto's words and simply thought Kishina, Minato you would be so proud of your son, so young and already so strong after a moment Kayubi smiles before saying kid your parents would be so proud of you already just as I am, get ready I'm going to activate your bloodline, but it's going to hurt. Oh and kid call me a cane, it's my true name okay a cane chan let's do this alright kid here goes brace yourself, a cane says before activating his bloodline and Naruto feels like fire has flowing through his soul before leaving the mindscape. Outside mindscape. Naruto exits his mindscape to find himself lying on the ground in the alley, with a mob of villagers approaching before getting up and letting out a scream that begins to sound like a roar, his face gets longer, his teeth lengthen and turn to fangs, his spine gets longer and forms a tail, his fingers and toes turn into claws, his skin becomes hard, dry, bumpy, and leathery. And finally he grows in size his head and body get taller and longer and larger, till he was easily reaching 20 feet tall, and at least 40 feet long from nose to tail his orange jumpsuit just hanging from his arms. As this was happening the mob of villagers just stood there watching the demon brat become this thing, before one of them finally snaps out of it and yells the demon is finally showing its true colors kill it, which snaps the others out of their shock and they begin to charge at Naruto. Another button appears and Minato presses it, causing an image of the creature Naruto turned into to appear. Everyone stares at the picture shocked by the creature's appearance holy shit that's cool Abita yells before being smacked upside the head by Rin, who then scolds him on his swearing. Zoom licks her lips seeing the creature now that is what I call an alpha hell, he might even be an apex she says before shuddering a little and letting out a very low moan, causing everyone to look at her and Jiraiya to giggle perversely before Tswan punches him in the face, sending him to the floor with smoking, coming from where her fist made contact. Ashina growls at Zoom hey no perving on my Nero chan she yells at Tsum causing everyone to sweat drop. Anko looks back to the picture damn that Gaki looks fearsome, she says before a smile comes to her face, as she pictures all the bloodshed that he could cause in that form. Minato clears his throat okay, how about I continue reading he suggests wanting to change the subject and get back to reading the story, before a fight breaks out between Kishina and Tsum. Kishina pouts fine, but I am keeping my eye on you Tsum she says glaring at Tsum for a moment before turning her attention back to Minato, as he begins reading again. Naruto turns and looks at the mob says oh no, but it comes out as Rahamu. The mob charges at him try to injure him with knives, sword, kunai, and other various sharp objects which just bounce of his skin, a shinobi in the mob coats his kunai in wind chakra before stabbing Naruto with it and ends up piercing about 3 inches into his skin, causing him to bleed slightly. Naruto lets out a roar before turning to the shinobi, he lets out a mighty roar roar before leaning down and lunging forward snatching the man by the waist in his mouth, the man screams before Naruto chomps down, biting the man in half with a loud crunch, the man's legs and upper torso fall to the ground with a wet plop, and the rest of the mob screams before trying to run. Everyone is speechless seeing this until Tsum and Anko whistle damn that was hot, they both say causing everyone to look at them like they were crazy, only to shake their heads as Minato continues. Naruto hears the scream and turns toward the rest of the mob, blood dripping from his mouth and teeth before lunging at the mob and begins to tear them apart, squishing some underfoot, slamming others into the alley's walls with his massive tail, ripping others apart with his jaws, all the while names and pictures passing through his mind, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Apatosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Pterodactyl, Procomsagnathus, and finally Diabolus Rex. Tsum and Anko once again whistle okay now that was hot. They yell only to be ignored as Minato continues to read. As this was happening two Anbu one with an Inu mask the other with a Hebe mask watch in horror and amazement, the Anbu with the Inu mask summons a dog and sends it to get the Hokage. Naruto finishes killing the last person in the mob when he hears someone appear and looks to see the Hokage standing before him with the Inu and Hebe masked Anbu. The Hokage looks at the scene before him blood and body parts everywhere and a huge creature standing there looking at him blood dripping from its mouth and fangs and an orange jumpsuit just barely hanging onto its little arms and recognizes it as Naruto's, Naruto, is that you the sand I may, asks the creature before him begins to shrink and change, revealing Naruto barely clothed. The Ashi who has been silent since Minato started reading says it seems your son will have quite a bloodline Minato surprising everyone since they had forgotten he was even there due to him being so quiet. Minato just chuckles so it would seem he ashy and thank you he says before he starts reading again. Daiji Hibi chan is that Unaruto asks before falling to his knees, Hibi rushes over and catches him before he hits the ground Nachua looks at Hibi, before placing his hand on the side of her masks and smiles, before giving her forehead a kiss thanks Hibi chan, what would I do without you? Hibi chuckles you're welcome kiddo, but how about you treat me to some dango to pay me back Naruto smiles sure thing Hibi chan all you can eat. 
Everyone sweat drops hearing this before Abita realizes something does that Anbu remind you of someone we know. He asks causing everyone to think for a minute before they all look at Anko who is just standing there what why are you all looking at me like that? She asks causing everyone to shrug before turning their attention back to the book. Naruto looks at the sand I made before saying I know who my parents are, about my tenant, and unlocked my bloodline, but we are going to need to go to your office to talk about it Marhibi-chan and Inusan must be there with us. The sand I may is shocked but recomposes himself before saying ok Naruto, Hibi, Inu, come with along he then snaps his fingers, and a Anbu with a weasel mask appears yes, Hokage-sama the Anbu asks. The sand I may looks at weasel before saying I need you to clean the alley up, make sure there is nothing left of the bodies and blood, and do not tell anyone what you have seen here tonight, is that understood the Anbu salutes before saying of course Hokage-sama, and tell Naruto I'm sorry I wasn't there for him tonight, the sand I may nods his head of course Itachi, and then leaves with Naruto. Hibi, and Inu. Ashina whistles hearing this wow it seems Makoto-chan's son Itachi is in Anbu already that is impressive for someone so young she says getting nods from everyone before they turn their attention back to the book. When they reach the Hokage's office Hibi sets Naruto on couch before sitting next to him, Inu leans up against the wall, and the sand I may sits behind his desk before dismissing the hidden Anbu in the room and acting a privacy seal, okay Naruto can you tell me what happened tonight he says. Naruto holds Hibi's hand, looks at the sand I may and nods okay jai jai, but can Hibi and Inu remove their masks, I already know who they are the sand I may nods. Inu removes his mask revealing a man in his mid-twenties with a cloth mask covering the lower half of his face, his leaf headband over his left eye and silver gravity defying hair, this is Kakashi Haddock. The picture of Kakashi as an adult pops up causing Rin to blush and Abito to scowl, as he mumbles something about damn pretty boys growing up into handsome men. DB then removes her mask revealing a beautiful young woman between 16 to 18 years old, with pupil-less chocolate brown eyes and beautiful violet hair, pulled into a pineapple shape, ponytail this is Anko Midarashi. Another picture pops up this one showing what Anko looks like as an adult, causing Abito to blush and Anko to go wide-eyed wow Anko-chan, you sure are beautiful when you get older, Kashina says causing Anko to blush. Naruto smiles at Anko before giving her cheek a kiss causing her to blush the group awe was at this, causing Anko to blush slightly before he turns to the sand I may, and continues his story it started when, and then proceeds to tell him everything that happened from being chased into that alley by the mob. Meeting the Kyubi her telling him her story and about his parents, the relationship between them and herself, along with how she gave him his bloodline, how he left his mindscape and turned into the creature which he is calling a dinosaur, how he defended himself from the mob before Hibi, Inu, Hiruzen himself showed up. When he is done everyone is speechless with there was on the ground before Anko snaps out of it and yells hell yeah, the strongest being alive is a female, take that sexists the group sweat drops hearing this. This proceeds to snap Kakashi and Hiruzen out of their shocked state, and the sand I may finally says I'm getting too old for this shit, okay I'm classifying everything said here as a S-rank secret, now Naruto what do you want to do? Naruto thinks for a second well jai jai I want to make my parents proud and protect the village and my precious people like you am chan Tuchi Oji-san and Anko-chan, so I want to be a shinobi he says with a smile. The group smiles hearing that Naruto wants to protect his precious people as they continue to listen to Minato Red. Hiruzen smiles and thinks Minato, Kashina you would be so proud of your son okay Naruto, so you want to join the academy? He asks. Naruto shakes his head actually jai jai I was hoping Anko-chan would teach me, since the academy teachers would try to sabotage my learning, and it would allow me to train with my bloodline and learn what I can do with it. Plus Akane chan said she wants to train me in some of her kitsune and akuma styles, the Hokage and Kakashi look amazed by how much thought he has put into this in such a short amount of time, while well, Anko has a slight blush due to Naruto wanting her to be his teacher. The group saddens hearing that Naruto's learning would likely be sabotaged in the academy due to the simplementedness of the teachers. However they smile and turn to Anko when he says he wants her as his teacher, causing Anko to blush slightly as she hears this and the attention she is getting from everyone. After a few minutes of thinking the sand I may finally speaks okay Naruto you have a good point, Anko can train you, but you will have to graduate with your age group. Naruto smiled brightly and nods his head thanks Jai Jai, just you wait by the time my age group graduates, I will be really strong that way I can protect my precious people he says. The sand I may smiles and looks to Anko Anko starting first thing in the morning, you are to begin training Naruto you have my permission to use training ground 44, actually I would recommend you use it and both of you live in the tower at the center of it that way we can keep not only his bloodline a secret for as long as possible, but also the fact that he is training so early. Hiraya, Tsunade, Tsum, Hiashi, Kishina, and Minato nod hearing this as it is wise for Naruto to keep his abilities secret for as long as possible. 
Banko nods of course old man I was planning on doing that anyway. Come on Naruto let's go get some rest before your torture training ya. Training starts tomorrow. She then grabs Naruto and both leave in a shushin. Kakashi nods to the sand I may and leaves himself. Everyone except for Anko sweat drop at hearing Anko slip up and causing her to rub the back of her neck sheepishly. Irizan leans back in his chair so what do you think of all this Jiraiya the wall next to the window shimmers, before revealing a tall man with white spike hair, wearing wooden clogs, a red kabuki style outfit with a large scroll tied to the back of his waist, and a headband that reads oil on it. The group's eyes widen at the reveal that Jiraiya was there the whole time before Minato continues. Jiraiya thinks for a minute well sensei if he is anything like Minato and Kishina, then he is going to be a powerhouse in the near future, then there is the QP and her story I believe it. Minato once told me about when he went with Kishina into her mindscape and met her and befriended her, which made the whole her attacking Kanoha for no reason so fishy in the first place, seeing how she loved Kishina and Minato like siblings. Then there is that bloodline of his it's amazing, so if you add all this up, he could very easily be the strongest person to walk the elemental nations, since the Sage of Six Paths, which adds more evidence to him being the child of prophecy that the Elder Toad spoke of. The whole group's jaws hit the floor upon hearing this not only could Naruto be as powerful as the Sage of Six Paths the true god of Shinobi, but he could also be the child of prophecy. The Aussie turns to Minato Minato you lucky bastard. He yells snapping everyone out of their shock and causing Tsum, Rin, Abito, Kakashi, and Anko to burst out in laughter. Minato chuckles well what can I say he ashi must be a lot of good karma or something he says rubbing the back of his neck. Kashina suddenly squeals shocking everyone my Sachi is going to be so strong and awesome I just know it. After all I am his mother so he must get it from me I'm so proud. She yells in a burst of motherly pride causing everyone to sweat drop. After a few minutes everyone calms down and Minato continues reading. The sand I may nods his head, that's what I thought too Jiraiya Jiraiya smiles and hands the sand I may a scroll well, here is the latest info from my sources sensei. Now if you'll excuse me I have some research to do he then giggles perversely and leaves through the window the sand I may wipes a little blood from his nose, a chuckles before getting up and looking out the window, and thinks Naruto you are already so strong for dealing with how the idiots of this village treat you, and you will only continue to grow stronger from now on, and I'm sure your parents are already proud of you I know I am. Everyone sweat drops at Jiraiya's behavior, and the sand I may's hidden perverted side before Tsuna Day punches Jiraiya in the face, again sending him to the ground in another smoking heap. Minato sighs at his sensei's behavior well that's the end of chapter 1 who wants to read next. He asks before Kashina quickly snatches the book from him. As Kashina is about to read Abito suddenly thinks of something wait, I just thought of something he says getting everyone's attention, if we know that someone attacks Kashina-san and Minato-sensei during Naruto's birth and extracts the QB then why don't we just kill or capture the person when we find out who they are. I mean Naruto is bound to find out who it is in this book he says, causing everyone to look at him with wide eyes as they hadn't thought of that. Another bright light appears to reveal Kurnodono standing before them I'm afraid that is impossible Abito he says solemnly. Abito narrows his eyes at Koronodono ya, yeah, and why is it impossible? He demands. Koronodono sighs it is because Minato and Kishina's deaths on the day of Naruto's birth are a fixed point in time, so even if you find the person who extracts a cane from Kishina, they will just die some other way, and Naruto will still end up as a cane's Jinchuriki he says, causing everyone's eyes to widen before Minato and Kishina lower their heads in sadness, while well, Abito has a confused look on his face. Koronodono sees and sighs once again I see you are confused, he says getting a nod from Absho before he makes a chalkboard appears out of thin air, and he draws a straight line on it, along with a series of dots on the line. Koronodono turns to the group and points to the line think of this line as the flow of time he says getting nods from everyone before gesturing to the dots, now these dots are fixed points in time, events that will always happen, no matter how much you try to change them, one such event is sadly the destruction of Yuzusha Shagakur he says shocking the group. Ashina's gasps hearing this wait you mean that Yuzusha Shagakur was destined to be destroyed and the Yuzumaki clan with it? She asks. Gernodono nods sadly yes, however how it was destroyed varies he says confusing the others a little in some timelines, it falls from the combined force Kiri, Kumo, and Iwa. Other times it is from a massive civil war or maybe an experimental seal backfiring or something, resulting in the death of everyone in the village. However there are rare instances where the entire Yuzumaki clan is not called, and a few manage to get away and hide he says shocking the group, but none more so than Kishina, who thinks that maybe some of her clan is still alive somewhere. Koronodono sees this and sighs, I know what you are thinking Kishina and I am sorry to say, I can't reveal if there are any Yuzumaki still alive and in hiding he says causing her to lower her head in sadness, however I will say that you will find out if you keep reading. 
However you cannot go looking for them or attempt to contact them when you finish reading the book in the event that there are still some Yuzumaki living he says atheritively. Suhina frown hearing this why not. They are a part of my clan my family. She yells in outrage. Hironodono sighs for what feels like the hundredth time it is because in the event that there still are some Yuzumaki alive, then they play an important role in events to come especially regarding Naruto, and if you were to attempt to contact or locate them, it could alter those events in a way that could spell disaster, he says causing Kishina to once again frown in sadness. Hironodono sees this and sighs once again as he can't stand seeing her like this Kishina, I promise you will find answers if you keep reading. And I want to tell you if there are any Yuzumaki left besides yourself and Tsunade, it's just the timeline is so fragile that if you try and change too many things, it could lead to a future where there is no life whatsoever left in the elemental nations or the destruction of the universe itself, he says sadly. Ishina brightens a little hearing this, but realizes something wait you said Tsunade is in Yuzumaki how is that possible? She asks getting nods from the others. Hironodono chuckles, she is the granddaughter of the Shadai Mei Hokage Hashirama send you right. He asks getting nods from everyone as it was common knowledge. Koronodono smiles now just who was the Hashirama's wife? He asks. As everyone realizes who he is talking about they collectively facip him in realization causing Kurnodono to laugh that's right it was Mito Senju, or as she was known before her marriage Mito Yuzumaki, which makes Tsunade one fourth Yuzumaki, and still part of your clan Kishina, he says before Kishina dashes over to Tsunade and wraps her in a hug which Tsunade returns. After a few minutes of the two hugging they releases each other and turn their attention to Koronodono, and Kishina smiles thank you for telling me this Koronodono, you have no idea how much it means to me to know, I still have family she says. Koronodono smiles sheepishly as he rubs the back of his neck, don't mention a Kishina I have actually always had a soft spot for you, ever since you were first revealed he says confusing the group, before he turns to Minato and glares Minato, you better treat her right and take care of her, or I will use the favor that Kami, Yami. And the Shinigami Omi to bend the very fabric of time to fling Kasina into the future to the point Naruto is alive, change his DNA a little bit so he wouldn't be her son, have the two fall in love with each other. And make you watch from the afterlife as the two of them make love, and she praises his stamina and well endowment to the heavens, as he makes yours look like a pencil by the time he is 13, he says dangerously. Minato pales hearing this, Kakashi and Absho nearly vomit as the image comes to mind, Rin passes out in a pool, her blood originating from her nose, Jiraiya giggles perversely, until Tsunade smashes him into the floor with a scowl on her face, but if you look closely you can see a blush on her cheeks. The ashy just stands there stoically, but inside his mind he is thinking thoughts along the lines of damn lucky blonde brat, regarding Naruto's size Kashina's face matches the color of her hair. Off to the side Tsu and Anko have twin trails of blood leaking heavily from their noses as they lick their lips suggestively picturing a grown-up Naruto naked. Hironodono chuckles okay that's enough for now, so I will see all of you later he says before vanishing into thin air again. This snaps the group out of their various mincets and after recovering from the information they were just told Kishina clears her throat okay let's get started she says before she begins reading. Chapter 2. Training and Encounters. The next morning Naruto wakes up to feel something snuggling his left side and looks over to see Anko using him like a body pillow, a small smile comes to his face as he thinks, she really is just like a little kid at times like this, he wiggles out of Anko's grip before placing a pillow in his place, so she won't wake up before walking out of the bedroom and towards the kitchen to make breakfast. Bishina smiles reading this Aw Anko chan you and Neri-chan look so cute together she says causing Anko to blush and everyone else to snicker at the scene. Anko wakes to the smell of something delicious and gets up noticing Naruto isn't in bed anymore, as she walks to kitchen to see Naruto cooking breakfast she yawns before asking Naruto good morning Naruto what's for breakfast and sits down at the table. A small sly smile comes to Naruto's face before answering well Anko-chan we have an egg omelette with cheese, onions, sausage, toast, slices of bacon and last but not least we have. Anko's eyes widen with each thing he lists off before getting impatient that he is stalling okay, what's the last thing we're having she asks impatiently. Another sly smile comes to Naruto's face well the last thing is some of my special Naruto dango, as soon he finishes Anko jumps from the her chair and glomps him oh Naru-kun, you spoil me, he smiles of course I do Anko-chan, but you're worth it, now let's eat before starting my training Anko nods, and they eat breakfast. Tsum whistles seeing this damn he can cook, is cute, guaranteed to be handsome in the future, well endowed, romantic, and guaranteed to be strong I want him she says. Anko snarls hearing this oh hell no, that is my man she says before blushing as she realizes what she just said. The group snickers seeing this before Jiraiya giggles perversely Minato your kid is a god among men not even born yet and he already has women throwing themselves at him, he giggles before getting flattened by Anther of Tsunade's punches. 
Kashina growls at Tsum stay away from my Naruchan you're too old for him she says. Tsum just raises an eyebrow at her friend oh, and maybe Naruto-kun likes older women, besides age is just a number all that matters is love she says with a smirk, causing Kashina to get angrier. Minato seeing Kashina get madder, decides to intervene before a fight breaks out Kashina-chan, how about you continue reading he suggests, and she reluctantly agrees. After finishing breakfast, both of them showering and getting dressed they leave the tower to start training, Anko turns to Naruto ok Naruto let's start by unlocking you chakra Naruto nods and forms the ram seal, and concentrating after a minute or so a massive burst of chakra erupts around him, nearly knocking Anko off her feet before dying down, Anko stands there with her jaw on the ground. Thinking holy shit that was more chakra than my entire reserves, and he is only 5 years old. Everyone is speechless as Kashina reads this holy hell. How can he already have so much chakra Bito yells stupefied by how much chakra Naruto has. Tsuna Day thinks for a minute I think it is a combination of his Uzumaki blood and a cane being sealed in him she says before seeing the confused expressions on some of the group's faces causing her to sigh, the Uzumaki clan not only have incredibly large chakra reserves, but their chakra is much denser than normal, meaning that there is more of it in their chakra coils. Add to that having a Bijuu sealed in him especially the strongest one and his chakra would likely get supercharged she says, causing the group's jaws to hang open. Tsuna Day decides to finish her explanation, judging from how much chakra he has at such a young age, and depending on how much he trains his reserves, he could easily has much chakra as one of the tailed beasts, maybe as much as a cane, by the time he is in his mid-teens to early twenties she says, leaving the group stunned. The cane shakes her head no, I think he will have even more chakra than me by that point, since he will also have my chakra at his disposal she says nearly making the group faint in shock, as they had completely forgot about Naruto having access to a cane's chakra. Kashina then smiles hell yeah my Naruchan is amazing. She yells proudly before she begins reading again. After recovering from her shocked state, Anko looks at Naruto and smiles well Naruto-kun you certainly full of surprises cause you just released more chakra than I have in my entire reserves, now that you have unlocked your chakra, the torter training yeah training can finally begin she then smiles sadistically, get ready Naruto cause the fun is about to start. Naruto merely gulps before thinking well I did ask for this, so who am I to complain he nods before saying I'm ready Anko sensei let's start, and so began Naruto's 8 years of torter training. Everyone sweat drops at the slip up as Kashina continues to read. One month later. Naruto had been training with Anko for a month learning various things including tojutsu, ninjutsu, kinjutsu, shurikenjutsu, tactics, stealth, and traps. The Kane chan had been teaching him her kitsune and akuma styles in his mindscape at night, along with how to use his bloodline which he had named Saurian Soul, and one night, while doing some late night training in his bloodline, he noticed something that set for a series of events that would change the lives of more people than he knew. Gureya whistles wow I have to hand it to the kid with him learning all of that he will be an incredibly strong yet balanced shinobi in the future he says. Minato nods yes he will with a diversity of skill like that he will be able to not only handle a variety of situations, but also adapt faster to changes in a fight, therefore reducing the chances of someone playing on one of his weaknesses, if he has one he said, proud of how his son is being diverse in his skills, and not focusing on one thing which could easily lead to his death. Kashina smiles proudly, I'm happy he is learning kinjutsu, as it is one of the things that made the Uzumaki famous I wonder if he will use my sword, she says before continuing to read. Naruto was training in the newest form of his bloodline that he had unlocked it was medium sized at about 6 to 8 feet tall and about 12 feet long, its body was lean, while at the same time muscular, his teeth were medium sized backwards, facing like snake fangs and razor sharp, his arms were medium length and had three claws for fingers. But the but the most intimidating feature of the form was the two six inch long claws on his feet one on each foot from what he remembered when the images and names passed through his mind a month earlier, this dinosaur was called a velociraptor, liked to hunt in packs and was incredibly smart. The picture of the velociraptor appears and looks at it in awe whoa that thing looks cool, especially those claws on its feet Abito says. Zoom nods it kind of reminds me of a wolf in the sense that it is incredibly smart and likes to hunt in packs she says, Kashina nods her head and continues reading. Naruto was running through the forest of death in his velociraptor form, getting used to its speed, evasiveness, and enhanced senses hunting a boar, so that he could make Anko something special for dinner, due to it being the one month anniversary of when they started training, when he smelled something strange coming from the direction of the Hyuga compound. It smelled of fear, and considering it was heading away from the compound he figured it something was wrong, and headed out to see what was happening. Tsuhina looks over to Anko and smirks all Anko chan it looks like Naru-chan really cares about you, after all, not many men would make something special for or celebrate a one-month anniversary, she teases causing Anko to blush and looks away. 
Hiyashi meanwhile narrows his eyes upon hearing that something was happening at the Hyuga compound. Five minutes earlier. A tall man dressed in all black with Kumagakur headband was running from the Hyuga compound with a large sack over his shoulder and said sack was five-year-old Hinata Hyuga first-born daughter of clan head Hiyashi Hyuga. She had been sleeping when a man came into her room and kidnapped her and was now taking her, who knows where to do who knows what to her and she was terrified. Praying that someone anyone would come save her. The Ashi's eyes widen here this what? He yells in outrage that someone would dare kidnap his child, let alone someone from Kumo. The rest of the group narrows their eyes as they can all tell what would happen to Hinata if the Kumo Shinobi was successful, and Kishina shivers involuntarily at the memory of her own kidnapping before she continues to read. The man smirked thinking how easy it had been to kidnap the young Hyuga heiress so that Kumo would finally get the Byakugan bloodline. He had been given a mission by the village's council to pose as the ambassador of the village and go to Kanoha to talk about establishing a peace treaty as cover to sneak and kidnap the young Hyuga heiress, he had already kidnapped the young girl and was on his way to Kumo when he noticed something up ahead. It looked like some kind of large bipedal lizard-like thing that had three claws on each hand and on each foot was a long menacing-looking claw in addition to the others, it just stood there looking at him. Lenato narrows his eyes, it seems that the Raikage is unaware of what is going on he says, while well, Hiashi shakes in rage, as Kashina starts reading again. Naruto had made it back to village fairly quickly and noticed a tall man in black with a large sack over his shoulder that was the source of the fear he smelled earlier and instantly realized that someone was being kidnapped by this man, so he quickly thought of a plan and put it into action. He created two shadow clones, glad that Anko had taught him the jutsu and due to him using it so much had mastered it, making him able to do it without having to use hand seals. He mentally commanded the two velociraptor clones of himself to take up a pincer formation around the man, after they left he stood out in the open and looked at the man. Ureya's eyes wide in hearing this amazing for him to be able to do the shadow clone jutsu at such a young age is already amazing, but to have mastered it to the point he doesn't need to do hand seals in just a month is astonishing. Then there is the plan he came up with for a five-year-old it is brilliant and shows that he is incredibly smart and most likely a genius he says in amazement. Hironodono appears before them and smiles actually he is a lot smarter than you think he says. Lenato looks at him curiously what do you mean Hironodono? He asks. Hironodono smiles well Naruto is currently smarter than Shikaku Nara and will only get smarter as he grows up and it is due greatly in part to a cane over there he says before everyone looks at a cane who is shocked. He chuckles a little while Naruto was in Kishina's womb, a cane was unknowingly pumping her chakra into Naruto as he developed he says shocking the group before he continues now normally this wouldn't be possible or even do anything, but due to Kishina and a cane being on such good terms, it increased and enhanced Naruto's development, especially in regards to his brain, organs, muscles. And bones he says. Tsunade raises an eyebrow at this in curiosity, how much of an enhancement and are we talking about she asks. Hironodono smiles well he when he was born his brain had the functioning capability of someone in their mid-teens, his bones are denser than usual, meaning they are harder to break, his muscles are more compact, giving him increased strength roughly equivalent to about a one-fourth of what you have when you use your super strength technique soon a day. And his organs not only work at twice the capacity of normal, but also extract more nutrients from food he says, shocking the entire group. Hironodono smiles again well if you will excuse me I have some things to take care of he says before disappearing, and the Kashina continues reading. The man looked at the creature before him for a minute before deciding enough was enough I don't know what you are, but you best get out of here before I kill the creature just tilted its head to the side the man set the sack down and took out a kunai fine have it your way, don't say I didn't warn you and charged at the creature. As he made it to the halfway point between them he thought stupid creature doesn't stand a chance, should have just left, better finish this quick before anyone shows up all these thoughts were running through his head as he got closer and closer, he never noticed the two shadows come out on either side of him, he never noticed them get closer to him. He never noticed one jump into the air with its feet forward, he never noticed the other slash his abdomen, he never noticed the one in the air descend upon him and tear into his flesh, he never noticed the look in the eyes of the one in front of him that said gotcha, he never noticed any of these things until it was too late, he felt his abdomen get sliced open. He felt the large claws of the one in the air slice into his back and pin him to the ground, he felt the teeth of the one his back grip the back of his neck, he felt fear as the pressure increased, he felt his neck start to twist, as the creature turned its head sharply then he felt no more as his neck snapped, severing his spine from his brain killing him. The ashy lets a small smile grace his face good riddance that will teach him to try and kidnap my daughter, I will have to think of a way to thank Naruto in the future when I meet him he says getting a smile from Minato and Kishina. 
Naruto looked at the man before him dead from his clone snapping his neck before dismissing his clones, tilting his head towards the sky, and letting out a roar a button pops up, and Kashina presses it, allowing the group to hear what the roar sounds like, before changing back to his normal form, and walking over to the sack and opening it. Anata was terrified the man had set her down, and then she heard him saying something, and then everything was quiet, she heard footsteps walking toward her before opening the bag, she expected to see the scary man that had put her in the bag, not a boy that had sun blonde hair, the most beautiful blue eyes she had ever seen, three whisker-like marks on each cheek. Smiling at her as he helped her out of the bag. Naruto helped the girl out of the bag as he took in her appearance she had midnight blue hair cut into a heim style, her eyes were a beautiful white with hints of lavender and had no pupils. She had on lavender pajamas he smiled at her are you alright, she nods good now let's get you home I'm sure that everyone is worried about you, he grabs her hand not noticing the blush on her face, my name is Naruto Uzumaki by the way what's yours he asks. The picture of Hinata appears causing the girls of the group to squeal at her cuteness Hiyashi your daughter is so cute. Kashina gushes causing Hiyashi to let a small smile grace his face. Soom chuckles, I just want to dress her up in all sorts of cute outfits she says uncharacteristically causing everyone to look at her like she had gone crazy, what just because I like cute things doesn't mean I am any less of a baddest, she says huffing causing everyone to sweat drop as Kashina begins to read again. She blushes a little more before answering Hinata hi Uga she says shyly. Naruto smiles nice to meet you Hinata-chan they walk for a little while before they see a man that looks like an older version of Hinata, but may obviously, the man notices the man runs towards them Hinata, there you are what happened, and who is this Hinata proceeds to tell the man what happened, while Naruto just stands there waiting till she is done. After Hinata finishes telling the man what happened he turns towards Naruto is what she true young man. He asks. Naruto nods yes sir I was out walking and enjoying the night when I noticed a man in all black running with a sack over his shoulder that was moving like someone inside and went after him, I then confronted said man and let Hinata-chan out of the bag before walking her back home, in which you saw us he responds honestly. The man in front of him looks skeptical, so he continues, if you are having a hard time believing me you can have someone go check the way we came from, they will find the man on the ground in the middle of the street. Meanwhile you and I can go with you to see the Hokage, where things will be explained further the man thinks for a second before nodding Naruto notices two more men appear next to him, one looks just like the man in front of him the man turns toward the man that looks like him. As Kashina is about to continue Abito interrupts I don't get why Hiyasi-san is having such a hard time believing Naruto. He says. Bakashi sighs, it is because Naruto is a five-year-old boy, and Hiyasi-san doesn't know that Naruto has been training he says, causing Abito's eyes to widen in realization before Kashina continues reading. Does Ashi go check up the road to see if there is a man lying in the center of the street, and if so bring him to Inoichi at the INT he says as his Ashi nods and leaves, he then turns toward the other man Ko take Hinata home, and inform Hitomi what happened the other man nods before leaving with Hinata, the man then turns toward Naruto come along Naruto let's go talk to the Hokage. Naruto's eyes widen you know who I am he asks amazed that the man knows who he is. The man chuckles of course I doubt there is anyone in the village that doesn't know who you are, and I must say that prank you played on the civilian council was very funny Naruto smiles and rubs the back of his head thanks, they had it coming the man smiles that they did Naruto, that they did. Kashina bursts out in laughter upon reading this I am so proud of my Naruchan, he inherited my prank skills she says, causing the others to not only sweat drop, but also shiver in fear at the thought of Naruto, inheriting Kashina's prank skills, before Kashina starts reading again. Naruto and the man reach the Hokage's office and enter to see the sand I made doing paperwork before looking up Ahiyashi Naruto what can I do for you he asks. The now named Hiyashi bows before speaking Hokage-sama earlier tonight my daughter Hinata was taken from her room by someone, and after searching I discovered young Naruto here walking her back home at which time I questioned him, and he told me how he was out for a walk when he noticed a man in black carrying a bag that was moving and proceed to confront the man and rescued Hinata at this the. Hokage's eyes widen and Naruto rubs the back of his head sheepishly. The Ashi then continues now after hearing young Naruto's story I was a little skeptical and said that we should talk to you about it, and after having co-escort Hinata home, and my brother has Asi go see if there was in fact a body down the road we came here he says. Hiruzen then looks to Naruto Naruto is what he Ashi said true he asks. Naruto nods his head yeah jai jai I was out training in that when I noticed the man and confronted him like Hiyashi sent said, before letting Hinata-chan out of the bag and walking her home when Hiyashi sent saw us Hiyashi raises an eyebrow at the mention of that wondering what it meant but decided to wait to ask. The doors to the Hokage's office then open to reveal his Ahi who walks in and bows to the Hokage and Hiyashi before smiling at Naruto, I have just finished my task Hiyashi, and like young Naruto, said there was in fact a man's body down the road, along with a sack that had residual amounts of Hinata's chakra in it. 
Upon bringing the body which I might had was in my own opinion very effectively killed, to Inoichi san he used his clan's mind walk jutsu to enter the man's mind and found out that he was a shinobi from Kumo that had orders from their council to pose as ambassador to discuss a peace treaty in order to kidnap a main branch Hyuga to be brought back so that they could have the Byakugan. All of this however went on with behind the back of the Yandai mare Ikage he finished. The Ashi's eyes wide in hearing Kashina read this before he resumes his usual stoic face and continues to listen to Kashina read. The Hokage then nods his head thank you his Ashi you may return home he says. As Ashi then bows before leaving, the Hokage turns toward Naruto and smiles well done Naruto you saved somebody from a fate worse than death tonight I am very proud of you he praises. Naruto smiles no problem jai jai I'm just glad Hanada-chan is safe, she seems like a nice person he finishes while the Hokage and he Ashi smile. The Ashi then looks at the Hokage Hokage-sama if I may what is this that that Naruto referred to earlier he asks. The Hokage looks to Naruto who nods, he then dismisses the Anbu in the room before setting up a privacy seal he Ashi, what we are about to tell you is a S-rank secret, not to be told to anyone he Ashi nods, the Hokage and Naruto then proceed to tell he Ashi about everything, including Naruto's heritage, his bloodline, how the QB really is, the night of his birth. His secret training with Anko nothing is left out, and by the end of it Hiashi's jaw is on the floor. Bonato chuckles hearing this wow Hiashi that has to be the most emotion I have seen out of you in a long time, not counting when you yelled in outrage at Hinata being kidnapped a few minutes ago, he teases getting a few chuckles from Abito, Jiraiya, and Tsum before Kashina continues reading. He then turns toward Naruto wait your Minato, and Kashina's son Naruto nods Naruto your father was not only my best friend, but your mother was best friends with my wife Itomi, when the four of us found out that both your mother and my wife were pregnant and that you were going to be a boy while me and my wife were having a girl. The four of us decided to form a marriage contract between you and Hinata at this Naruto's eyes widen, that's right Naruto you and Hinata are engaged to each other he says. The group is shocked to hear this before Anko and Tsum collapse to their hands and knees with clouds of depression above their heads, Nuo the greatest guy is already taken it's not fair. They yell simultaneously. Tsuna Day then thinks of something actually wouldn't Naruto be placed under the clan resotration act because he is the last known Yuzumaki and Namikas, not to mention his bloodline she says before everyone looks at her with wide eyes what? She asks confused about why they are all looking at her like that. Tsum and Anko instantly jump and rush over to her wrapping her in a hug, oh Tsuna Day sama you are a genius. They say at the same time. Off to the side Jiraiya is crying and I'm tears Minato your son is the luckiest man alive he gets to have a harem, it's not fair I want a harem he says causing everyone to sweat drop as Ksuhina starts reading again. Naruto thinks for a moment he ashi send while I'm honored to be engaged to Hinata, I will not marry someone unless it is out of love, and both of us love each other, and therefore will not marry Hinata, unless such a thing happens at this Hiasi eyes widen however, that does not mean that I will not give Hinata a chance, from the short amount of time that I have known her. I can already tell she is a great person, and anyone she falls in love with will be the luckiest man in all of the elemental nations, what I propose is that we keep my engagement to her a secret that way her and I get to know each other, and if we end up loving each other, we will know the love between us is real, and not due to the contract, and then the contract is fulfilled. And if we don't then she will never know and go on with her life, her happiness is more important than some contract he finishes with a smile. Minato and Kashina smile proudly at the caring nature of their son. Hiashi smiles as he thinks Naruto from that statement alone, I find you worthy of marrying my daughter, as you put her happiness above your own, he then turns to Minato and smiles before the two share a nod of understanding of what they will do the minute they finish the story. The Ashi and the Hokage are stunned before both smile thinking the same thing Minato Kashina your son is already such a great person, Hiashi then speaks Naruto, I see so much of your parents in you, you have your father's intellect and compassion, and your mother's kind heart. Very well we will keep the engagement a secret from Hinata, so that if you both fall in love it will be genuine, he then turns toward the Hokage and bows I will take my leave Hokage-sama he says before leaving. Hiruzen looks toward Naruto Naruto you truly are one of a kind he says with a smile. Naruto smiles and rubs the back of his head well jai jai of course I am, I am me after all he says. The Hokage chuckles that you are Naruto, that you are, now I think it's time you go and see Anko, I'm sure she is worried about you, he says with a hidden smirk. Naruto pales thinking that well jai jai gotta go see ya, he then leaves so fast you would swear he was using the Hiroshin as you saw him. The group burst into laughter seeing this, except for Anko who pouts and mumbles something along the lines of I'm not that bad before Kashina continues reading. Naruto returns to the tower and sneaks in, hoping Anko is asleep when suddenly the lights turn on to show Anko standing there with her arms crossed, tapping her foot well look who decided to show up where have you been, I have been missing my favorite pillow she says with a smirk. 
Naruto chuckles and begins to explain what happened, and when he is done Anko just shakes her head, not even six years old, and already getting into situations like this, what am I going to do with you, and what's this I hear about you being engaged to little Hinata. Naruto chuckles nervously well he was set up by our parents and might not even happen if we don't love each other, he then walks over to Anko and hugs her besides, even if we do fall in love and get married, you won't get rid of me that easily because I love you, and you will be there right there beside her if I marry Hinata, he says with a loving smile. The women of the group let out a squeal at how romantic Naruto is, why Lanko blushes heavily at how much Nato and her older self love each other before Kashina continues reading. Anko's eyes widen and blushes before smiling not one of the smiles she shows most people, but a true smile that only Naruto has seen, you got that right Gaki, but that's not for a while after all, what would people think of me marrying a Gaki like you she teases. Naruto chuckles they would think that I am the luckiest guy in the world for having a woman as incredible and beautiful as you as my wife, he then stand on his tiptoes and kisses her cheek, now let's go to bed, we have a lot of training to do and only 7 years and 11 months to do it he says. Anko smiles, you got that right Gaki they then go into the bedroom and go to sleep with Anko cuddling Naruto like a he is a body pillow. Ashina walks over to Anko who is blushing heavily and hugs her thank you for being there for my Naruchan Anko. I can face my death happily knowing he will have someone who truly loves waiting for him when he gets a little older, and I would be proud to call you by my daughter-in-law, she says with tears in her eyes. Tears begin trailing down Anko's cheeks as Kashina says this, and she wraps her arms around Kashina's waist thank you, and I would be honored to have you as my mother-in-law Kashina Kasan she says happily. Off to the side Minato smiles at the scene as he thinks Kashina isn't the only one that would be proud to have you as a daughter-in-law, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there for Naruto after a few minutes Kashina and Anko separate, and Kashina continues reading. The 5'8 tall 13-year-old with sun blonde hair blue eyes and three whisker-like marks on each cheek stands on the roof of a building next to the Ninja Academy, he is wearing black steel toe combat boots, dark red cargo pants, a fishnet shirt that shows of his six-pack abs and chest, a long red trench coat with black flames on the bottom that goes down to his ankles. On the back of the trench coat near the top are the words Saurian Soul in gold lettering, and underneath it, there is some kind of creature's skull Jurassic Park logo, on his right arm, there is a tattoo of a crimson nine-tailed fox, on his chest above his right peck there is a tattoo of a purple snake coiled around a heart. On his left peck there is a tattoo of a the moon with lavender hints in it above a heart, and he is wearing black sunglasses, he looks at the building before looking at the note in his hands, and smiling well better not keep them waiting. Who should I just enter the building normally or with style style, it is he then smirks before running and leaping into the air and rolling into a ball Naruto Uzumaki was about to make himself known, and things would never be the same for those around him those poor bastards. The picture of Naruto pops up showing everyone what he looks like resulting in massive nosebleeds from Anko, and soon holy hell he is hot. They yell at the same time as they begin to drill seeing the picture. Rin is trying to hide a small nosebleed herself upon seeing what Naruto looks like. The Bido has a cloud of depression over his head, seeing how handsome Naruto is, while Kakashi just stands there with his eyebrow twitching. Jiraiya giggles perversely seeing that Naruto is bound to get some babes with looks like those, and he would have been hit by Tsuna Day if she too wasn't staring at the picture with a blush and a very small nosebleed. Minato smiles proudly at how handsome his son is, until Kashina looks at him with a blush on her face Minato, he is way hotter than you she says, causing Minato's jaw to hang open before he collapses to the ground with a huge cloud of depression of his head. After a few minutes everyone recovers from their various states after seeing the picture of Naruto and Kashina clears her throat, that is the end of the chapter who wants to read next. She asks as Tsuna Day raises her hand and Kashina hands her the book. Kashina hands Tsuna Day the book before Tsuna Day clears her throat and begins to read. Iruka Yamino was many things a man in his mid-late twenties, a shinobi of Konoha, a teacher of the next generation of Konoha shinobi, and finally an orphan from the Kayubi attack 13 years ago. However as he walked into his classroom with his assistant teacher Mizuki, he couldn't help but feel like something was going to happen today that would not only be hilarious but also make a fool of him, but he pushed it aside for the moment and looked upon his class. First there was Sasuke Ichiha he had brown hair that looked like a duck's ass, onyx eyes, and had a look on his face that would make you think somebody stuck a 10 feet pull up his ass and killed his puppy. He wore a dark blue shirt with the Ichiha fan on the back, white shorts and black sandals he sat at his seat with an air that said, I'm the best thing since sliced bread, go before me delusional much. Ashina laughs hearing this wow talk about arrogant and delusional she says getting chuckles from the others. Abito sighs it's times like this that I really hate the fact that I am an Ichiha he says before Rin puts her hand on his shoulder to comfort him. Minato nods his head he must be Makoto-chan and Fugaku's youngest son, since Makoto is pregnant right now with their first child, he says getting nods from the group before Tsunade continues reading. 
Next there was Joji Akamichi tub big bone boy munching on a bag of chips he had on a grey shirt, tan shorts, and a pair of sandals next to him sat his best friend Shikamarinara. Shikamarinara is one of the smartest people in the village like the rest of his clan, but he was also one of the laziest also like the rest of his clan the males anyway, the females however were energetic and would often be seen whacking their husbands, boyfriends, or brothers over the head with frying pans, they seemed to pull out of thin hair. He had brown hair pulled into a pineapple ponytail, he wore a brown shirt and black pants with grey sandals, and he had his head down on his desk and was currently sleeping. Hiraya chuckles hearing this they must be Chaoza and Shikaku's sons he says before Tsunade continues reading. Next was Shino Aburam he has black hair and wore a long closed trench coat that covered his entire body up to his nose and wore black sunglasses that hid his eyes next to him sat Kiba and Yuzuka. Minato smiles hearing this Hushino must be Shibi's son, and Kiba must be he begins before a loud yell cuts him off. The group turns their attention and they turn to see Tsum on her hands and knees with tears running down her cheeks new. Now I can't be with Naruto-kun. After all why would he want to be with someone who already has a kid she yells, causing the group to sweat drop before they hearing someone clear their throat, causing them to turn and see Koronodono standing behind them. Koronodono smiles and waves yo thought I heard someone yell in despair and decided to drop by he says before seeing Tsum. Koronodono chuckles seeing this Tsum san you have nothing to worry about in regards to you having a kid or in this case two kids, affecting your chances of being with Naruto he says, causing Tsum to stop crying and look up at him. Koronodono smiles at her, you never know Naruto might like being with a MILF, he says causing Tsum to gain a look of hope in her eyes, while everyone else has their jaws on the floor and Jiraiya is blown back by a massive nosebleed. Koronodono chuckles at everyone's expressions now if you excuse me I have to go talk to someone in regards to another new universe that is due to pop up in a week or two, he says before vanishing into thin air. Tsum fists pumps the air yeah I still have a shot at Naruto-kun. She yells excitedly before jumping to the side to avoid a chakra chain from an angry Kashina. Kashina glares at Tsum I thought I said to stay away from my Nero-chan, you are too old for him she snarls. Tsum pulls down one of her eyelids and blows a raspberry like Koronodono said, maybe Naruto-kun would like being with a sexy milf like my future self, she says teasingly before Kashina starts chasing her around the room, and Tsunade just shakes her head before she continues reading. Kiba Inuzuka is a loud, brash, perverted boy who wore a grey jacket with a hood over his head, brown shorts and sandals, like the rest of his clan, he had two fang tattoos on his cheeks, and his nin-dog companion Akamaru a little puppy with white fur sat on his head. Next was Ino Yamanaka he has long blonde hair pulled into a ponytail and wore a purple top and shorts, she like the majority of the females in the class, was a fangirl chasing after Sasuke. Minato chuckles hearing this she must be Inoichi's future daughter he says getting nods from everyone including Jiraiya, who just recovered from his nosebleed, along with Kishina and Tsum, who just finished chasing and being chased by each other. The Ashi nods his head indeed however it is a disgrace that she is a fangirl, especially since she has a lot of potential being Inoichi's child, he says getting nods in agreement as Tsunade continues reading. Sitting next to her was the class banshee I mean Sakura Haruno, she wore a red dress with blue sandals, she had pink hair and green eyes, and also like she the majority of the girls in the class she too was a fangirl chasing Sasuke. The whole group pales hearing this dear Kami don't tell me that she is that banshee Mibuki's daughter Tsum says in horror at the thought of someone as loud and annoying as Mibuki Hirono having a child. The Ashi nods his head dumbly I fear that is exactly what it means he says, before going through a quick prayer, praying for the sanity of not only his future daughter, but also everyone in her graduating class. The rest of the group does the same thing before Tsunade continues reading. Next there was Hinata Hayuga, she had changed a lot in the last 7 years she had grown to be around 5'3", her hair had grown and now reaches mid-back, and she wears a baggy beige jacket that hides her mid-sea cup breasts and long blue pants. Hiraya giggles perversely hearing this Naruto is going to be very lucky in the future, if Hinata already is that developed at such a young age, he says before he ashi hits him with a juken strike to his stomach, while Tsunade stomps on his balls before she begins reading a jin. The rest of the kids in the class were just no-name civilians that Aruka really didn't bother remembering the names of cause they probably wouldn't appear again after this chapter, where did that come from he thought before shaking his head, he then clears his throat, trying to get the class's attention no effect, so he tries a few more times, before a tick mark appears on his forehead okay shut up and pay attention he yells instantly the class does so causing him to smile. Minato chuckles, it seems that Aruka is a very good teacher if the students listen to him so well he says causing the group to sweat drop as Tsunade continues reading. Okay now today is the day of the graduation exam that will determine if you become shinobi or not, he begins before the one of the windows in the classroom break and a black ball flies through before attaching itself to the blackboard, the ball pops open, revealing a banner that says the sexiest man alive. 
Naruto Uzumaki is here and standing next to it is a 5'8 tall 13 year old with sun blonde hair blue eyes and three whisker like marks on each, he is wearing black steel toe combat boots, dark red cargo pants, a fishnet shirt that shows of his six pack abs and chest, a long red trench coat with black flames on the bottom that goes down to his ankles. On the back of the trench coat near the top are the words Saurian Soul in gold lettering, and underneath it, there is some kind of creature's skull Jurassic Park logo, on his right arm, there is a tattoo of a crimson nine-tailed fox, on his chest above his right peck there is a tattoo of a purple snake coiled around a heart. On his left peck there is a tattoo of a the moon with lavender hints in it above a heart, and he is wearing black sunglasses. He turns to Aruka and raises his hand yo am I late he asks casually. The group is speechless upon hearing this until Anko breaks the silence that was awesome. She yells in amazement at how cool Naruto's entrance was. Bishina smiles my Nari-chan is so cool. She yells in a fit of motherly pride at how cool her son is. Tsunade chuckles before she continues reading. Iruka just stands there for a second before clearing his throat um who are and why are you my class he asks, trying to suppress the headache that is sure to begin forming soon. Naruto just tilts his head to the side and looks at Aruka well in order my name is Naruto Uzumaki, hence the reason I came out of Venom standing next to that ball next to me that has the banner saying the sexiest man alive. Naruto Uzumaki is here cue sweat drop from most of the class and as to what I am doing here this is my class and I'm here to take the graduation exam, I have a note from the Hokage and hands Aruka the note causing his eyes to widen before rubbing the bridge of his nose and muttering I need a drink, he then notices Naruto holding a flask out to him, here some of my special stash it helps with the stress he says offering Aruka a drink. Ashina scowls hearing this I don't approve of Naruchan drinking at such a young age she says not liking that Naruto is drinking alcohol at such a young age. Aruka grabs the flask and takes a gulp before handing it back to Naruto thanks, I needed that okay now class we have a new student joining us today meet Naruto Uzumaki he says. Naruto raises his hand yo nice to meet you he greets. Suddenly there was a yell of Aruka sensei why does this nobody get to just join at the end of the year when we're graduating only someone as awesome as Sasuke-kun should be able to do that was the yell of the class banshee I mean Sakura ya Sakura. The group winces hearing this before Tsum gulps she is definitely the daughter of that banshee Mabuki she says getting nods from the rest of the group before Tsunade continues reading. After recovering and stopping his ears from bleeding, Hiruka looks at Sakura before saying first Sakura, he has a note signed by the Hokage himself, saying he can, and secondly, if you ever yell like that again I will have you clean the Akamichi sewer system you and ITL it sparkles with your toothbrush, which caused many of the class to go green in the face, but none more so than Sakura. The group turns green hearing this before Ibito runs off to the side to vomit. Minato gulps down some vomit that had risen to the back of his throat, Haruka sure is a sadist when it comes to punishments he says getting nods from the others, who also swallow the vomit that was in their throats, before Tsunade continues reading. After compassing himself he turns to Naruto and says okay Naruto how about you tell us a little about yourself. Naruto smiles before nodding okay Aruka sensei my name is Naruto Uzumaki the sexiest man alive cue sweat drop from Aruka my likes are training, Raymond, foxes, snakes and reptiles in general, the moon, my hebeheim, my lavender moonheim, music, singing and playing my guitar, cooking. My dislikes are traitors, rapists, perverts, the time it takes to cook Raymond, and people who can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll it's sealed in. My dream for the future is to get stronger to protect my precious people, bring peace to the elemental nations, become Hokage, and have a family he finishes with smile. Asina smiles hearing this my Naruchan sure does have some great dreams she says with a smile at Naruto's dreams of becoming Hokage and having a family. Minato nods agreed especially his dream of bringing peace to the elemental nations. I have a feeling that if anyone can do it Naruto can he says getting nods from the others before Tsunade continues reading. Aruka and the class sit there speechless for a bit before there is a loud squeal and a midnight blue-haired blur rockets into Naruto who just catches it and twirls around before stopping he looks at the person in his arms and smiles, hello Hinata-chan did you miss me? Her answer was to put her arms around his neck and kiss him on the lips passionately as he wraps his arms around her waist, this causes various reactions among the class, Aruka has his jaw on the ground and a little blood dripping down his nose and the rest of the class has their jaws on the floor. Dureya giggles perversely before Tsunade punches his head, Hiyashi and Minato smile at the scene. A sudden squeal causes everyone to turn and see Kashina gushing at the scene, they are so cute together. She yells before pulling Anko into her embrace Anko-chan this means the three of you will be together. Think of all the grandbabies I will have in the future I can't wait to see what they look like. Kashina yells causing Anko to blush heavily and everyone else laugh. After Kashina calms down and releases a very embarrassed Anko from her hug Tsunade continues reading. 
After ending the kiss Naruto looks Hinata in the eyes and smiles, I'll take that as a yes she responds by tapping him on the chest lightly. Naruto looks at the class what haven't you ever seen someone kiss their fiancé before. This causes everyone's jaws to go deeper into the floor and more blood to leak from Aruka's nose. After a few minutes everyone recovers and Aruka clears his throat ok Naruto Hinata, if you will take your seats, we will start the written exam Naruto and Hinata nod, before giving each other a quick kiss on the lips and going to their seats. Aruka then has Mizuki pass out the tests who then proceeds to give everyone a test before coming to Naruto and gives him his while before turning around and smiling to himself while he thinks let's see the demon brat pass that. The group scowls hearing this it seems that there are still people who hate Naruto for holding a cane Senhiashi says with narrowed eyes. Minato frowns at Mizuki's actions before he notices Rin opening a notebook and writing something down in it Rin what are you writing down? He asks. Rin looks up from the notebook I am making a list of everyone who is nice to Naruto-kun and a list of everyone who is either mean or has hurt him she says, causing the group's eyes to widen. Abito smiles yeah that's a great idea Rin-chan we can give gifts to everyone who is nice to Naruto and punish those who are mean or hurt him, he says getting nods from the rest of the group before Tsunade continues reading. Naruto looks at the test and notices that they are at least down in level questions, realizing that it's under a Jinjutsu before thinking so he is one of the people who hates me for holding a Kane chan well let's just fix this, shall we a a Kane chan with a smile. The Kane smiles, you got that right Naruto-kun let's show then what happens when they mess with my little brother, she says from within the seal, through the mental link they set up a few years back Naruto, then dispels the Jinjutsu and answers the questions getting them all right and then waits for everyone else to finish. The group smiles hearing this as Tsunade continues reading. 30 minutes later. Iruka looks at the clock before turning to the class all right that's time pencils down and bring your tests to me before heading outside to the training field everyone gets up and heads outside. Everyone stands outside at the throwing range as Aruka and Mizuki walk up okay, now we will test your shuriken jutsu when I call your name come up and pick up 10 shuriken and 10 kunai and throw them at the training dummies he then proceeds to call people one by one, Choji gets a 7 tenths for both shuriken and kunai. Shikamaru gets a 6 tenths for shuriken and kunai barely trying while trying enough so he passes, Shino gets a 7 tenths for shuriken and 8 tenths for kunai, Kiba gets a 7 tenths for both shuriken and kunai, both Ino and Sakura get 6 tenths for both shuriken and kunai, Hinata gets a 8 tenths for both kunai and shuriken. Sasuke gets a 8 tenths for shuriken and a 9 tenths for kunai, causing his fangirls to scream about how he is the best, he walks from the throwing spot and gives Naruto a look that says beat that dog Naruto just ignores him, Haruka then calls Naruto's name. Ashina then smiles my prank senses and Yuzumaki pride senses are tingling, she says getting raised eyebrows from the group as Tsunade continues reading. Naruto walks up to the line and picks up the kunai and shuriken, Haruka looks at him, whenever you're ready Naruto he says. Naruto nods and gets into a throwing stance before throwing all 10 kunai at once, followed by all 10 shuriken. After he is done most of the class laughs thinking he missed and Sakura yells the baka can't even hit the target. Everyone then looks to Aruka who has his eyes wide and his jaw wide open, before turning to Naruto great job Naruto perfect score and bonus points for hitting other vital points he says. This shuts everyone up and Sakura yells what are you taking about sensei he missed everyone thinking Aruka is blind. Aruka then turns to Sakura no Sakura, he not only hit everyone he placed them in places that are all fatal, ranging from the throat, lungs, kidneys, liver, and finally the eyes this shuts her up, while everyone just looks on with wide eyes, and Sasuke grits his teeth due to the dope getting a higher score. Ashina bursts out laughing hearing the sea, I knew Naruto was going to do something like that she says. Ureya whistles damn for Naruto to be able to hit all of the fatal points at once with shuriken and kunai at his age is very impressive, he says causing Minato to smile proudly at his son's skills, as Tsunade continues reading. Aruka then says okay next up is Tajutsu first up, is Shino Aburam vs random civilian 1 Aruka starts the match, and within a few minutes the winner is Shino, next is Choji vs Shikamaru, Shikamaru forfeits stating it's too troublesome then Ino vs Sakura, which ends in a draw, next is Kiba vs. Random Civilian 2 and Kiba wins fairly quickly, Hinata wins against Random Civilian 3, finally Aruka calls Sasuke Chiha vs Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto steps into the ring and gets into a stance as Sasuke walks into the ring, you should give up now Dobe there is no way you can beat me and Achiha we are the elite of this village, no one is better than us he boasts as he gets into the Achiha interceptor fist style. Ashina scowls hearing the Sasuke team, definitely takes after his team father Fugaku more than Makoto-chan, she snarls getting nods from the rest of the group, while Libido hangs his head in shame at his clansman actions. 
Naruto just laughs if that's the case Sasuke then why haven't there been any Ichiha Hokage's then, if your clan is the best like you say then by definition every single Hokage would have been one or at least one of them would have been, but nope there isn't a single Hokage that's been an Ichiha, so that must mean your clan isn't as great as you say it is he taunts. The group bursts out laughing hearing this before Kashina looks at Tsunade, I think Sasuke team might need your medical expertise, Tsunade cause he just got burned. She says causing the group to laugh even harder, while Tsum and Anko are rolling on the floor laughing. After a few minutes everyone calms down, and Tsunade begins reading again. Sasuke throws a wild punch at Naruto's head, but Naruto just moves his head to the side, before giving a hard uppercut to Sasuke's chin, sending him flying into the air. Naruto then jumps into the air delivers a devastating axe kick to Sasuke's stomach, sending him crashing into the ground where he bounces off the ground. Naruto lands beside him before delivering a spin kick which sends him flying out of the ring into a tree. Everyone stands there in silence watching what can only be described as a slaughter before Sasuke goes flying out of the ring and hits a tree, Iruka recovers from his shock before saying winner Naruto Uzumaki. Abito has his jaw hanging open holy crap Naruto just slaughtered Sasuke he says, amazed by how effortlessly Naruto defeated Sasuke. Naruto turns around to leave the ring as Sasuke starts to get up. Sasuke whose furious starts going through hand seals. Hiroka notices this and tries to rush to stop him, but is too late as Sasuke stops and takes a deep breath before yelling fire style. Grand fireball jutsu a medium size fire blows out of his mouth and heads toward Naruto who turns around just in time to see the fireball hit him. Naruto. The group yells horrified at what they just hear Tswan read as Tswan continues reading. Everyone watches in horror as they see the fireball hit Naruto, and Sakura yells yeah, that's what you get for not letting Sasuke kun win like you should have Baka now you're dead and laughs everyone turns to look at her with a WTF expression on their face, right before Hinata hits her with a Juken strike, knocking her out. Sasuke begins laughing manically, that's what you get dope when you go against an elite like myself, he then suddenly feels something cold and metal on his throat and turns to see Naruto next to him completely unharmed and holding a kunai to his throat with a murderous look in his eyes. Naruto glares at Sasuke so you think you can try to kill a fellow leaf shinobi, just they beat you in perfectly legal spar. You do know that what you just did counts as treason right team, which means I am well within my rights to simply end you life right here you pathetic sack of shit. Why your brother left you alive instead of someone like your mother or his friend Shisui I will never know but understand this right now Sasuke. If you ever try to kill another leaf shinobi I will personally cut your balls off, cut your eyes out of head, and make you eat them before placing your balls in your eye sockets, before cutting that tiny pencil dick of yours and shove it down your throat. Before shoving my foot so far up your ass I will force the pole that stuck up there out your mouth do I make myself clear, he yelled leaking massive amounts of ki, killing intent, all pointed directly at Sasuke, who could only nod slowly as he pissed and shit his pants before passing out. The group gasps hearing this interrupting Tsunade wait does that mean that Itachi killed the entire Ichiha clan, except for Sasuke and himself. Kishina asks horrified at what she just heard and that her best friend is dead in the future and at the hands of her own son no less. Before anyone could answer the TV turns on showing Koronodono, I'm afraid so Kishina san he says shocking the group and causing tears to run down Kishina's cheeks, however there is more than meets the eye to Itachi, killing the entire Ichiha clan other than Sasuke, which will be revealed in time he says before the TV shuts off. Abido has a few tears running down his cheeks before he discreetly wipes them away playing it off as something in his eyes. However Rin notices the tears and a sad expression appears on her face before Tsunade continues reading. Naruto turns toward Aruka sorry about that Aruka sensei just had to get a point across to the team and considering how thick his skull is, I thought it would be best if I went about it that way he says. Aruka nods his head very well Naruto, considering what Sasuke attempted you are well within your right to do that and I will be brining his actions up with the Hokage, so he will definitely get punished he says, disgusted by Sasuke's actions. Naruto nods his head, I don't think that will be necessary isn't that right Anbu san he says turning to a nearby tree. The Nanbu with an Inu mask jumps down and nods to Naruto very impressive on being able to find me Naruto, how were you able to do so if I might ask he asks. Naruto smiles I was able to smell you he says in a mischievous tone. The Anbu just stands there what do I smell like if I might ask Naruto beckons the Anbu over and whispers in his ear the Anbu suddenly flinches before standing up well, I will keep that in mind Naruto and thank you for the advice now I will take the Ichiha to clean himself up before taking him to the Hokage, have a nice day Inu says. Naruto smiles you too Inu and the Anbu then leaves. Naruto then turns toward the class and asks what. Curious as to why everyone is looking at him like he grew a second head. Aruka looks at him and asks what did you tell him Naruto. 
Naruto pats his fist into his palm and his eyes a little before grinning sadistically. I told him he smells like semen, alcohol, and shame, and that he may want to lay off on playing his skin flute before going out on patrol, or at least take a shower to wash of the shame and smell before he does so Aruka, and everyone just stand there with their jaws on the ground before bursting out in laughter. The group bursts out laughing hearing this, Anko and Tsum are rolling on the floor, laughing their asses off, while everyone else is doubled over in laughter. After a few minutes of laughing everyone recovers when Ibito realizes something, wait a minute isn't future Kakashi and Anbu, and his call sign is Inu he says, causing everyone's eyes to widen before they look to Kakashi, who is blushing heavily, which results in everyone except for Kakashi to begin laughing again. After about 10 minutes everyone calms down and stops laughing, and Tsuna Day begins reading again. After about 10 minutes they calm down, and Aruka speaks okay, now that that's out of our system, let's start the final part of the exam the ninjutsu portion when I call you name please perform a hench. Substitution and finally the bunch and clone in that order, and if you have any other jutsu for extra credit okay first up is one by one, the class went up to take the test with the civilians mostly failing with all the clan heirs and Sakura. Each perform the three required jutsu and an extra credit one Choji use his partial expansion jutsu, Shikamaru use his Kagi main jutsu, Ino use her mind body switch jutsu on Shikamaru to make him do an embarrassing dance, Shino used his clan's bug clone jutsu, Kiba used his clan's man beast clone with Akamaru, Sakura used some pathetic jutsu on random civilian 4. Anata used her clan's 32 palm strike, and finally it was Naruto's turn. Ashina grins hearing this my prank senses are tingling again, she says causing the group to gulp and wonder what Naruto has planned. Iruka looks at Naruto okay Naruto please perform the henge Naruto nods and instantly changes into a perfect copy of the Yandai Mei. Iruka seeing the transformation gives Naruto the signal to release it very good Naruto a perfect transformation and without hand seals bonus points for that. Now please perform the substitution he says. Naruto nods and smiles sadistically, suddenly there is a poof of smoke, and the sand I may is there reading a very familiar orange book with blood leaking from his nose, Iruka looks at him and clears his throat, um hokage sama he says getting the sand I may's attention. The group bursts out in laughter hearing this I can't believe that sand I may sama is a pervert, Abito says in between laughter. Tsuna Day narrows her eyes yes it is very shocking, although I am curious as to who the author of that book is and where I can find them to give them a piece of my mind she says cracking her knuckles before turning to Jiraiya, who is sweating heavily only for Tsuna Day to begin beating on him, while the rest of the group ignores his cries of pain. After Tsuna Day finishes beating Jiraiya, she picks up the book and clears her throat okay let's continue, shall we she says before continuing to read. The sand I may looks up and sees Aruka and everyone else before asking Naruto. Hiroka nods his head, and suddenly the Hokage goes up in a poof of smoke, and Naruto is standing there again snickering. Hiroka sighs and looks at Naruto ok Naruto now please perform the bunshin he says. Naruto tilts his head and asks Hiroka sensei can it be a variation of the bunshin. Hiroka nods his head and Naruto then closes his eyes suddenly the whole training field goes up in smoke. When it clears there are at least 500 Naruto clones standing there doing various things from cleaning their nails to play rock paper scissors with each other. The group's jaws hit the floor when they hear this before Tsum whistles damn Naruto is just full of surprises she says getting nods from the others. Tsum then licks her lips seductively, I wonder if that old tale about men who have massive amounts of chakra also being large below the belt she says causing Ren to blush heavily, Anko to have a large nosebleed, Tsuna Day to blush slightly with a glazed look in her eye. Pashina however has a red miasma of death surrounding her, while her hair sticks up stop perving on my Nero chan she says before she begins comically chasing Tsum around with a frying pan that C seemed to pull out of thin air. The group laughs seeing this and watches Kashina chase Tsum while yelling at her for a while, before Kashina calms down and Tsuna Day starts reading again. Iruka sees this and his jaw hits the ground and he drops his clipboard, Naruto are these what I think they are? He asks stunned by what he is seeing. Naruto nods yep they are shadow clones he says. Hiba raises an eyebrow hearing this Iruka sensei what are shadow clones he asks. Iruka gathers himself before answering Kiba the shadow clone jutsu is a rank in jutsu due to the large amount of chakra needed to perform it. It requires so much chakra that most jounin can only make around 5 to 10 before they run out of chakra. Okage-sama himself could only make around 100 when he was in his prime, but for Naruto to make over 500 in one sitting and not even be winded is astounding alone, but to do so at the age of 13 is just mind-boggling everyone's jaws hit the ground as they look at Naruto. Iruka finally recovers from the shock as Naruto dispels the clones ok Naruto I have a feeling I am going to regret saying this, but do you have a jutsu you would like to perform for extra credit, not that you need it at this point he asks, fearing the answer after everything that has happened today. 
Another sadistic smile appears on Naruto's face sending shivers down everyone's spines before he says yeah Aruka sensei But everyone needs to step back it's kind of big Aruka nods and steps with everyone else Hashina giggles my prank senses are tingling once again she says with a mischievous smile as Tsunade continues reading Naruto closes his eyes before suddenly opening them and saying sorry in soul Tyrannosaurus Rex Naruto then begins to change his face gets longer His teeth lengthen and turn to fangs, his spine gets longer and forms a tail his fingers and toes turn into claws, his skin becomes hard, dry, bumpy, and leathery. Finally he grows in size his head and body get taller and longer and larger, till he was easily reaching 20 feet tall, and at least 40 feet long from nose to tail. Everyone minus Hinata looks on in shock and terror at the creature before them, as it raises its head to the sky and lets out a loud roar, before changing back to Naruto. Ashina, Tsum, and Anko fall to the floor, laughing their asses off at the prank Naruto just pulled Okami that was funny. Kashina yells in between her laughter before Tsunade continues reading. When he was done changing back Aruka finally recovers from his shock before shakily asking Naruto what was that. Naruto chuckles that Aruka sensei is part of my never before seen bloodline called Saurian soul however I can't go into details about what it is and what I can do, but I can tell I can turn into creatures similar to that one, he finishes with another sadistic smile. Aruka sighs and rubs the bridge of his nose ok Naruto I understand and you get extra credit for it, now that the end of the exam, those of you that passed come back in a week for team placements, after saying that everyone begins to leave Naruto and Hinata leave holding hands. Hashina gushes over the scene all they look so cute together she says getting nods from the group as Tsunade continues reading. As they walk down the streets Naruto turns to Hinata so Hinata how was the academy? He asks. Hinata giggles well Naruto kun it was okay, but it would have been better if you were there with me she says with a slight pout. Naruto smiles hearing this I know Hinata chan, but you know why I couldn't be there with you he says. Hinata smiles sadly yeah I can't believe how stupid the villagers are she says with a sigh. Naruto laughs you and me both, Anko chan says hi by the way, and looks forward to the next time she can help you train he says. Hinata shivers at that remembering the couple of times she asked Anko to help her train. After meeting Anko the two started to talk about various things like girl stuff, the future, and of course Naruto. After some time they decided that they would share Naruto, because due to how his early childhood had been, they believed he should get as much love as possible, and if that means they share him then all the better. They also decided that if any other girls were to come into his life then as long as they truly loved him, then they were welcome to share him with them. Hinata smiles while remembering that. Hashina smiles hearing this happy to know that Naru-kun will have so much love in his life. Jiraiya on the other hand giggles lecherously at the fact that Naruto will get his own harem, only for Tsunade to punch him in the face, knocking him to the ground before she continues reading. They continue to walk and it begins to get darker, so Naruto decided to walk Hinata home, as they near the Hyuga compound Naruto remembers something, hey Hinata-chan, do you still have that little gift Anko-chan gave you when you two decided to share me? He asks. Hinata blushes atomic red before quietly answering yes Naruto-kun I still have it and that was the most embarrassing thing I have ever done in my life she says. Naruto chuckles remembering that when Anko and Hinata decided to share Naruto, Anko decided they should celebrate which led to Anko getting the orange nine-tailed fox tattooed on her ass cheek, Hinata getting one on her inner thigh, and Naruto getting the tattoos that are on his chest and arm. The Ashi's eyes widen hearing this what? He yells in shock upon hearing that his future daughter got a tattoo before glaring at Anko who is chuckling. Anko upon sensing that she is being glared at gulps and turns to see Hiashi glaring at her so intensely that if looks could kill, she would be dead faster than Minato when he uses Hiroshin. Anko gulpers once more now let's just calm down Hiashi-sama, it's not like the tattoo is in a noticeable place. In fact Naruto will be the only one to ever see it due to him being Hinata's husband in the future she says trying to prevent Hiashi from giving her a beatdown Jaikin style. The Ashi glares at Anko for a minute longer you got lucky this time Anko he says causing Anko to sigh in relief as Tsunade goes back to reading. As they reach the Hyuga compound Naruto gives Hinata a quick kiss on the lips and bids her goodnight as she goes in and he leaves, after walking a little he notices Mizuki running with a big scroll tied to his back with Aruka sensei chasing him, sensing something off he creates a clone to go and inform the Hokage while he chases after him. Mizuki was thrilled he couldn't believe how easy it had been to steal the forbidden scroll, now all he had to do was deliver it his master Orochimaru, and he would not only be rich but also powerful, as he was jumping through the trees he noticed he was being followed and stopped for a second to find both Aruka and Naruto in front of him, and says well look what we have here Aruka and the demon brat. Himself just when I thought this couldn't get any better now I can kill the demon brat before I bring this scroll to Orochimaru-sama. 
The group Sweat drops hearing this he does realize that he just gave away not only who he is working for, but also, what he stole, and broke a rank secret right. Abito says finding what Mizuki just did to be rather stupid. Bakashi nods it would appear that he isn't the sharpest kunai in the box. I bet he is going too into some cliché monologue that villains tend to do he says as Tsunade continues reading. Naruto just chuckles so you think you can kill us and get away with the forbidden scroll man I could tell you were stupid Mizuki team, but this is beyond stupid you're not going anywhere. Mizuki just laughs you stop me you've got to be kidding me before I kill you do you want to know why you're hated Naruto he says. Naruka's eyes widen no Mizuki it's forbidden, but Mizuki ignores him and throws a bunch of kunai and shuriken at him, which surprises him allowing them to hit him shut up Aruka, now what do you say Naruto want to know why you're hated. Naruto just tilts his head sure, why not Mizuki then goes on to tell him about the Kayubi, how it was sealed in him, and all that jazz when he is done Naruto just laughs. The group sweat drops at how Kakashi guessed right about Mizuki doing the cliché villain monologue before Tsunade continues reading. Mizuki gets frustrated and yells what so funny demon he snaps. Naruto stops laughing and looks at Mizuki I have know about the QB since I was 5 years old shocking Mizuki and Aruka, before he continues furthermore you said the QB was sealed in me, which makes me the QB, but if you fill a glass with water, does the glass become the water he says. At this Mizuki and Aruka's eyes widen before a small smile comes to Aruka's face as Naruto continues now Mizuki you have attempted to kill two leaf shinobi, stolen the forbidden scroll. And revealed an S rank secret, which means that your sentence is death. Naruto finishes with a sadistic smirk on his face, as he calls out multi shadow clone jutsu. The forest is then filled with at least 500 Narutos, all of which have the same sadistic smirk before all the clones say sorry in soul. Velociraptor All the clones turn into Velociraptors and look at Mizuki, who by this point is pissing himself, at which point all 500 Velociraptor clones attack at once, and all he can do is scream as he is torn to shreds. Tsum whistles upon hearing this damn that was brutal I love it. She says getting a nod of agreement from Anko while off to the side Abito vomits in a trash can at the gory scene, while his teammates are rather green in the face. Lenato nods it was very impressive however it was a bit on the gory side and definitely overkill for the situation he says analyzing Naruto's dispatching of Mizuki as Tswan once again continues reading. Aruka looks on as Mizuki is torn to shreds, leaving only his head and the scroll untouched and feels like he is going to throw up. Naruto walks over to him and begins pulling out the kunai and shuriken you alright Aruka-sensei? He asks. Aruka nods before saying Naruto about what Mizuki said, but Naruto cuts him off it's okay Aruka-sensei like I said I have known since I was 5, and when Jai Jai shows up and we get back to his office, everything will be explained Naruto, then finishes pulling out the last of the shuriken and kunai, before going over and picking up the forbidden scroll in Mizuki's head, just as the Hokage and some. Anbu show up. The sand I may looks at the scene before him looking at Naruto and smiling good work Naruto, mission complete. He says and winks slightly. Hiraya chuckles hearing this very smart sensei he says catching the other's attention. Abita raises an eyebrow in confusion hearing this what do you mean Jiraiya sama? He asks. Hiraya smiles Saratobi sensei is playing off Naruto's involvement as a mission that he issued that way, there is no chance of Naruto getting in trouble for killing Mizuki. If Saratobi sensei didn't do this, he runs the risk of the council's trying to punish Naruto for killing Mizuki, since Naruto can still be considered a civilian, due to him not having been assigned to a team and passing his gen in exam yet he says explaining himself. The group's eyes widen in realization upon hearing this as Tsunade goes back to reading. Narchuo catches on and plays along of course Hokage-sama like we thought the Mizuki was the traitor, and after confirming this, following him here where I joined Iruka sensei and confronting him. Mizuki proceeded to break an S-rank law punishable by death, along with the attempted murder of two-leaf shinobi, and the theft of the forbidden scroll, with the intention to bring it to the traitor Rachimaru, I eliminated him and retrieved the scroll, while attending to Aruka sensei's injuries before you showed up he says. The Hokage nods and turns to his Anbu Inu, take a squad to see if there are any others around that might be waiting for Mizuki, and if so try to capture them, but if unable to take them alive, you have authorization to kill the Minu nods and leaves, with most of the Anbu, leaving only the Hokage, the Anbu named Niko, Naruto and Aruka in the clearing. The Sand Aimei then turns towards Niko Niko help Aruka up we are heading to my office Niko nods, and does so before the four of the Shushin to the Hokage's office. Once they reach the office the sand I may has the other and believe before activating a privacy Nico remove you mask Nico nods and does so revealing a beautiful young woman in her mid-twenties with violet eyes and purple hair, this is Yugao Yuzuki Anbu agent Nico she smiles at Naruto, it's been a while Naruto-kun, how have you been she asks. Naruto walks over and gives her a hug I've been good Yugao ni how are you and hey nai he asks. Yugao smiles down at him as she returns the hug. 
We're good Naruto-kun now let's see what Hokage-sama has to say Naruto nods and releases the hug before turning to the Hokage. Ashina smiles hearing this happy to know that one of her students will grow so strong as she continues to listen to Tsuna Dayared. Irizen smiles before turning toward Aruka Aruka what we are about to tell you is an S-rank secret, so it must not be told to anyone he says. Aruka gulps and nods the Hokage and Naruto, then proceed to tell Aruka everything about Naruto, his parents, the QB, the relationship between them and so on, by the time they are done Aruka's mind is blown the Hokage, then tells him he can and he does so. Yugao then gives Naruto another hug before leaving herself. Naruto then turns towards the Hokage who smiles at him and pulls out some money Naruto I am classifying this incident as an air rank mission for you, so here is your pay, and I have to say you haven't even been a shinobi for a day yet and already captured a traitor. I look forward to seeing your career my boy if this is just the start of it. He says with a proud smile. Naruto smiles well you know me Jai Jai he chuckles, then walks to the window and jumps on the windowsill well see you later Jai Jai, Anko-chan is probably waiting for me Naruto then jumps out the window and begins running on rooftops towards the forest of death. Hiraya laughs at seeing Naruto leave the Hokage's office in the same way he does before continuing to listen to Tsuna Day as she continues reading. Hiruzen just looks out the window and watches him go thinking Naruto your will of fire burns so brightly that it breathes life into people whose own will of fire has weakened he then sits back down at his desk to fight the greatest foe to ever exist paperwork. Naruto arrives back at the tower in the forest of death and spots Anko munching on some leftover dango. He smirks and sneaks up behind her before wrapping his arms around her waist and kissing her neck, causing her to let out a moan, and turns her head to see Naruto, you know Naruto-kun, it's not very smart to sneak up on me she says. Naruto chuckles before kissing her neck again I can't help it, especially considering how much I love you and how beautiful you are he says as Anko blushes a little as she thinks how much she has changed in the 8 years they have been together. She still wears her violet hair in the same pineapple ponytail, she now wears a long tan trench coat that reaches her heels, she has on a black miniskirt help up by a belt that has a snake wrapped around a fox head holding it up, she wears a black mini top with a fishnet mesh shirt covering it, black shin guards and arm guards and a pair of black combat boots like Naruto. The picture of Anko as an adult appears causing Abito and Kakashi to have nosebleeds and Jiraiya to giggle, before he is knocked to the ground by one of Tsunade's punches. Anko stares at her adult body and grins before punching the air hell yeah I am smoking hot. She yells causing Kashina and Tsum to laugh before Tsunade continues reading. That's it for today guys, hope you all enjoyed this video, thanks for watching it guys. See you in next video.